Thank you. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, at this time, I'd like you to join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 For Michael Eric Davis passed suddenly in uh, June 7, 2019. This was Troy's son. Oh, sorry, Troy. And I want to move right into uh, introductions and announcements, starting with the commissioners. In whatever order you'd like to go, Commissioner. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming out once again for the annual meeting. Uh, board of commissioners have worked. Uh, Pretty hard on your behalf for the 26 communities in the city of And uh, you know, we've got a lot of progress in our poor houses. We've done a lot of lighting upgrades in them. We're working on air conditioning upgrades in Graham. We've done boiler upgrades in both Hingham and in uh, Crockett Superior Court. All of these items uh, were the possibility was made by funding the budget two years ago of capital improvements, which is now being recycled because we get reimbursed for every penny we spend, we get reimbursement. So every year, we're going to be recycling that money from the Commonwealth to keep those buildings up. The, Commo uh, the commissioners hadn't done that for decades, and it's a good investment of the Commonwealth's money. Uh, we also uh, are working on uh, a couple of things. First of all, the, the Woodlot Use Committee, uh, the, as you guys uh, allowed us to buy two pieces of land and successfully bought those two pieces of land to give us access to the 100 acres that we have over off of Long Pond Road. Uh, both of those transactions have occurred. We created a, a Woodlot Use Committee. We don't expect that anything will be developing on that for, for many years, so we're taking it slow and steady. We've had uh, the, the town of Plymouth uh, in to, to discuss zoning, discuss what they see as the future, and we're going to pack away at, at things as we move forward. We meet once every two or three months. It's not a hard duty, uh, but I wanted to let you know that that is something that we are working on. And it's a big asset that you own as 27 communities that the uh, county is uh, eventually going to make use of uh, on your behalf. Our 4-H uh, program, you're going to hear a little bit about. Um, when we are, Molly, Molly, why don't you come on up here? We'll just talk quickly about 4-H uh, and goals of 4-H. Uh, the cooperative extension, uh, it, it, the county commissioners fund more than 90% of the cooperative extension's budget, and that's you funding the budget for us to serve your children. And most of these children, are, are doing things that you can't get at the local level, like animal husbandry and stuff like that that I don't even know about. But uh, they, uh, it's growing leaps and bounds, and we're really proud of the accomplishments that they've made. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm being told that they can't pick it up on the microphone, so if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Molly. <laughs> That would make more sense, huh? Or you can see. And thank you for Lakefield TV for filming. This is the first time we've ever filmed here, so we're not used to uh, being filmed, which is why we ran for the county, so we wouldn't be on TV. So um, other than that, um, we are currently in uh, negotiations with the Commonwealth on the county farm. Um, so you may hear bits and pieces of that in your communities. Uh, you own the county farm. Uh, the sheriff operates a farm on the county farm. We're trying to nail down that last piece of the sheriff transfer of the Commonwealth, and we hope to have that resolved by uh, the end of the month. But I'm going to leave it to, to Molly to talk quickly 
about future goals because some of the goals involve the county fund. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Molly Vollmer. I'm the Extension Director for Plymouth County here. Uh, and we've been working for a number of years on some opportunities in planning uh, if we were to obtain or when we obtain the land uh, for the county farm that we could expand our extension and 4-H programs. The biggest change in our 4-H uh, extension office was two years ago with the hiring of our entomologist, which was supported um, by this board, and we have seen great success with that, and we would like to continue growing our program to reach more and more youth and residents of the county. So I've put together, you'll see in your packets, there is a press release and some information on um, what we would like to do over the coming years, but we need land in order to do what we have planned, um, starting with the expansion of our entomology program and setting up some research sites for uh, ticks and other insects that affect this area. Uh, we are ongoing. Uh, our entomologist, Blake Dinius, has opportunities with some uh, research institutions and local universities, and we would really like to be able to capitalize on those opportunities, but we need the space and control sites to be able to do that. So that is one um, area. In our 4-H program, we are known for our animal husbandry. We have kids with uh, small animals, chickens, rabbits, dogs and cats, all the way up to horses. And there are multiple opportunities to enhance those programs and bring youth from urban areas here that couldn't otherwise interact with those animals. We see situations like that time after time at places like the Marshfield and Rochester fairs, and we would really like to make those opportunities more accessible to all the youth in Plymouth County. So our 4-H entomology program is one of our biggest in-school town programs. Many of you have local schools that participate year after year, and we would really like to set up initially a 4-H poultry farm with a working chicken coop and a place where we could get fertile eggs on a more regular basis year or almost year round, uh, rather than having to go several hours out of the way to other states to continue that program. Uh, we have also a need here to bring back some more horticulture programs. We have been without a horticulturalist for many years now, and we continue to get calls and field them here at the office on a daily basis, especially this time of year. Home gardening, commercial gardening, the landscape industry is huge here in Plymouth County, and we really would like to be able to service those residents better by having programs here, and we would like to do a master gardener program, which has had great success in other parts of the state and other parts of the country and I think that it would be a tremendous opportunity here for our Plymouth County residents. Um, and we also would like to continue our roots in our 4-H program, which is leadership, <coughs> community service, by having some sort of a central leadership clinic or school where we could bring kids to do short and long-term programs. Again, there are some other models in counties close to us and across the country that have had really great programs reaching youth of all ages, but specifically teens, keeping them off of the streets, keeping them engaged appropriately. Again, with the opioid crisis here uh, and some other social issues that are happening, it would be tremendous to service those youth in a positive manner and have them go forth to be uh, you know, engaged members of society. So those are some of our goals over the coming years. I'd be happy to answer questions or Commissioner Plata. The, the, the county farm is 90 plus acres and the sheriff currently uh, operates on about 50 of those acres. So uh, the county's goal in about three years is to begin these programs on 20 acres. So uh, it's not something we're going to be asked to fund in this year, next year, or even the third year. But we anticipate by the fourth year uh, to have lined up grants to get this program started. And we wanted you to be aware of that. So. Uh, that's that's the long-term goals right now, and uh, the short-term goals is keeping our buildings up. Uh, the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as you will see, is paying us more and more money each year on courthouse rent. Dean and I will be happy to hear that. Uh, and, then, and they're very satisfied uh, with the conditions of our courthouses, which is something they weren't six years ago. So we're making major headways on your courthouses and on your buildings. Um, that's all I have to say. I know it's going to be a long night or a short night, and I don't want to keep you guys here. And uh, <coughs> so, 
Selectman Mahoney is raising his hand, but I'm not the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mahoney, if, if you, I know you have some questions. Yeah, there's questions on the county, Tom. So you had an introductory statement, Dan. Hmm? The last sentence there was something like tying up some last loose end or something. With yes. the yeah. So in, uh, it's a good question, John. In 2009, the, the legislature and the governor signed a bill, an act, <coughs> that took our jail away from the county. Uh, and part of that act, when they took the jail, uh, was they took mm -hmm. the, some land around the jail and the jail, and uh, there were a lot of loose ends that weren't tied into that act. One of them was retirement. Uh, year after year, uh, we came and talked to you about our MOU, if those of you who have been in the long term. Uh, they basically took the jail and left us with the, the retirement. Uh, you know, they bought, they took the house and left us with the mortgage. So, uh, as Tom likes to say, so the last of those loose ends is a lease with the Commonwealth for the farm. You know, we want the con we want the sheriff to continue on the farm. The county commissioners uh, know he's a good steward. Um, we just haven't been able to get that last piece done, and that's what we're working on. Okay. So you're talking about attempting to derive some sort of revenue stream and compensation for you know, allowing the sheriff to continue on the site. Uh, the, the terms of the terms of the negotiations, uh, executive session, and I will not dive into them yet. Right. So the county farm is 90 acres, and you said earlier that the sheriff farm is 40 or 50. 40 or 50. 40. So Someone in between depends on the year. You move a few years down the road, and you're establishing this 4-H program now mm -hmm. on about 20. Mm -hmm. So you suggest that that your program would operate on 20, and the county sheriff would continue to operate on 40. Uh, there's, there's no reason why we can't coexist. None whatsoever. Okay. Any other questions? And, uh, at the end, we're, I know there's some questions in the county woodlot, but I've asked that anybody that has that to wait till the end of the meeting to get Sure. All right. Thank you. Um, at this point, if we could have the commissioners just introduce yourselves, as I forgot, in uh, the county treasurer. We have uh, Commissioner Hanley. Uh, Commissioner Wright, we have uh, Treasurer Tom O'Brien here somewhere, <laughs> Tom Sam. Registrar of Deeds, John Buckley. Um, and myself, you know, your chairman. And uh, at this point, uh, I want to welcome uh, any new members that we may have. And uh, we're going to take a vote on the chair and vice chair of the advisory committee, which is before you. So at this point, I'll, I'll open nominations for uh, chair of the advisory committee. I nominate Michael Brayton. Second. Wonderful. <laughs> any, any further nominations? No. Seeing no further nominations, I close nominations for uh, chair. I'll take a vote. All in favor uh, of me as chair? All right. All right. All right. Wonderful. We can. All right. Uh, I nominate, uh, well, open nominations for vice chair. I nominate uh, Mr. Sullivan for vice chair. Second. Any? Uh, all in favor, excuse me, uh, any further nominations for vice chair? None. Hearing none, I take a vote. Uh, ask for call for a vote on the uh, vice chair as uh, Mr. Sullivan. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Right. All right. <coughs> and. Not to correct you, mm, go ahead. The whole advisory board has to vote that. Yes, I, I thought I heard they're yeah. murmuring. So <laughs> let's get a vote from the, from the whole body uh, on that last one. So vote for the, uh, well, when do we do it? Because I, I don't think I heard anybody from the I, chair. I, I was wondering if they didn't yeah. like your job. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've been asked. Uh, let's go back and just do that from the whole uh, body. The, uh, for me as chair, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Um, <laughs> uh, all in favor of Mr. Sullivan for vice chair? Aye. All opposed? All right. I almost said it. All right. And at this point, uh, I'm going to ask Commissioner Pallotta to give us an overview of Plymouth County government. For those new members that are here, most of you have heard this many times, but uh, you did most of it, Commissioner, but if you could just give us a, a quick overview of where... We're the, we're the custodians of three courthouses. Come um, uh, <laughs> on, you're on camera, Dan. <laughs> I have a voice for radio. <laughs> um, no, face for radio, is that what it is? <laughs> face for radio? I didn't say that. I heard it. I, heard it. I expected that from Paul. I expected that. 
Uh, we're, we are responsible pretty much for just about all of your uh, vehicle purchases. Uh, we have a cooperative vehicle purchase that you all participate in, almost <laughs> all of you do. So you buy your vehicles through Plymouth County, and we are encouraging you to do so again. MAPC has started their vehicle purchasing to try and get in on, on what we've been doing for 25 years. Uh, and of course, they have a staff of four salesmen working on you, and we don't. So we're going to we're encouraging you, you as selectmen to go back to your towns and and do the math. You'll find that uh, on multiple vehicle purchases, I think we are the the best deal in town. If it's a single vehicle, it's pretty close. Um, we are the custodians of three courthouses. Uh, we are also the custodians of the Registry of Deeds buildings, and we are responsible for all the union contracts, including the registry as well as the hiring of all employees, just like you would be in, uh, in your uh, <clears throat> communities. We are the custodians of the cooperative extension, which you just heard Molly talk about. Um, our cooperative extension is uh, one of the best in the state, <coughs> along with Barnstable County. The counties that were eliminated in 1993 no longer have viable 4-H programs, which is sad, but our county is doing strong, and so is in Barnstable and Norfolk and Bristol's. Um, we are also uh, responsible uh, custodians uh, for PCOT. Uh, those of you that have joined PCOT know that you're getting a, an average a return of 10% on your OPEB money. Our OPEB trust has been <coughs> wildly successful. We have exceeded $20 million in that trust that we started just two years ago, <coughs> where our goal was $5 million. After a few years, we're at $20 million. So we're pretty excited about not only the returns, we're excited about the 27 municipal units, 28 municipal units that have signed up with Kingston being the most recent member. Um, we are uh, responsible for uh, the treasurer's staff, which is our staff, is responsible for the uh, financial well-being of the Bayflower the health group's numbers, and uh, we are 20% of the vote on the Plymouth County Retirement Board. So we, we're kind of like all this mismatch of stuff that nobody kind of wants to deal with, kind of gets stuck with the county, and we, we, we take it from there. That's, that's it in a nutshell. I could mm -hmm. go into all the little stuff, but <coughs> I'd, I'd boil them to death. Right. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Plata. And uh, now I ask uh, Treasurer O'Brien to give us an overview of the 2020 revenue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Notice I knew to come right to the mic. <laughs> Some things come with experience. Uh, and before I begin, uh, Mr. Guerin, I'm so sorry for your loss. Uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing Troy for a number of decades, and uh, there isn't a finer individual, finer family. And really sorry for that tragedy. You're in our thoughts. Um, before I begin with the revenues, I just wanted to let the advisory board members know there is a bound copy of the FY18 audit available for you. I don't know where the deputy treasurer put those copies. Um, oh, they're right up here. So if you'd like one, in the past they've been hot items. Now I can barely seem to give them away. Um, but they are for advisory board members if you want them. Needless to say, uh, the audit came back uh, exceedingly uh, positive. Uh, a clean audit, and in fact, we and the commissioners receive a lot of compliments, particularly because, and think of this as you manage your towns, we're a $10 million budget. Uh, over the last two years, we've put more than $1.7 million as a prepayment toward our pension liability. Uh, we've started from zero to more than 650000 in the stabilization fund, and we are uh, dedicating significant enough revenues to our OPEB obligation to have reduced that liability from 32 million down to 16 million in two and a half years. Uh, that all on a $10 million budget, it's pretty remarkable. The auditors reflect that, so if you suffer from insomnia, love numbers like I do, and want to read it, it's in that bound copy up here, and Jeff, uh, the deputy treasurer, can give you a copy. We have enough for most of the advisory board members, I can get more. I will let you know that the uh, commissioners approved it at a few meetings ago. It is up online if you want to see it and uh, it's available for the general public. Uh, without any further ado, although there's a lot of other things I'd love to talk about, um, we'll get on to the revenues. Uh, fairly simple, you'll see there's not a huge increase at all from the previous year. In fact, I'm sure you're dealing with many of your town budgets and challenges. Uh, you wish your increases were as modest, and this is really a, a commendation to the commissioners for their hard work and fiscal responsibility. 
Uh, the first one is a allowable assessment to communities, as you know, because of Prop 2.5, that can only go up 2.5%. That's what it does. Uh, that's a very modest increase in the assessment, uh, and we certainly believe that you folks get your money's worth. The next two items, the recording fees uh, collected at the Registry of Deeds and the Deeds Excise, are numbers that the Register and I are required to meet and to agree on uh, by statute. We've been doing that. Uh, John is a pleasure to work with. He knows uh, the Registry and those numbers inside and out. Uh, and we are projecting out. You can see they're down from previous years, but that's really a reflection of uh, the real estate market and uh, what's happened over the last number of months and, and where we see the trend going. It's interesting, I always like to let this group know that uh, John and I have been doing this together now for uh, more than 10 years, and our projections over those 10 years have always been more accurate than the state DOR's projections uh, for the statewide same calculation. So uh, we're pretty close. Uh, courthouse rent is uh, what we expect to get from the state for reimbursement. Uh, I know that uh, Dan Salvucci and many others here uh, were very helpful in making sure the state began to pay their bill, at least timely. Um, you see that increase is the result of the efforts of the commissioners to put more money into all three of the courthouses, some significant money, and that'll be reimbursement back. Don't forget, that's money spent last fiscal year. So we get our money back 18 months after we spend it. It's a hard way to operate, but uh, we manage through some fiscal responsibility. The dredge program, and I, I didn't know if there was going to be a conversation about that. I thought there might be uh, because uh, we've just uh, entered into a partnership with another town. I'll let either the commissioners or our administrator talk about that. Uh, that's a dollar in, dollar out. So if you were to flip over to the budget, which we'll get to later, you'll see $25,000 is expected revenue, $25,000 is expect, expected expense. But it's, again, a dollar in, dollar out. Municipal Procurement Administration is predominantly driven, predominantly, by the vehicle bid. Uh, which has been wildly successful. In fact, so, so su successful that the state decided they wanted to try and compete with us. We'll see how that goes. We have seen a little bit of a dip as the state has thrown a lot of resources. It's fascinating and frustrating to me and to the commissioners and to the administrator uh, that we manage it with a really a fine administrator, Frank Basler, and they have a huge staff that the state pays salaries and benefits to sell and market their program, and our program is still better. So as the uh, chairman said, we do encourage you to look at our program. If you're buying vehicles, please buy them from us because you're getting a better deal. Uh, and I actually have to thank the town of Hanover because uh, the police chief in Hanover, uh, Walter Sweeney, uh, actually uh, looked at this and did the numbers and came to the conclusion we were the cheapest. So thank you. Thank him for doing that. Uh, regional service parts and grants. This is one that we're excited to talk about. You'll see a significant increase. The reason for that is that we have in our budget, and we'll talk about that on the budget side, uh, hiring a grant writer. What we intend to do there, and this was the impetus and request from one of the towns, I see the town of Kingston here. Um, Kingston approached us a few weeks ago and asked if we would consider adding that in uh, and funding that and get reimbursed from two or three communities that wanted to pay for a portion of that grant writer's time. So what we thought was we'd have the salary of 50,000, we had to add benefits and others, uh, other items in to cover the cost. But the goal of the commissioners, who were very receptive to the idea, is to have three communities enter into an MOA or an MOU with the county uh, for a third of that grant writer's time to write grants at a cost of 25000 I know that Kingston has already expressed an interest and wants to be first in line, and since they came up with the idea, they, they would. But if this is something you're interested in for the next fiscal year, please talk to Frank Basler, I would think would be our best uh, resource here. Let him know you're interested. We'll see. It's, it's probably going to be a first come, first serve basis, uh, and we'll try and, and get you in if you're interested. But we are asking for a $25,000 contribution to cover that cost for the year, but we think it'll be hugely successful. Uh, the next item is the parking department. Uh, you can see that that's gone down a little bit, and the reason is, and you'll see on the expense side, uh, we're going to be upgrading the department. Uh, we're going to be uh, buying some uh, handheld uh, devices which will allow for digital recording of the plates. Uh, we have a very antiquated system and we need to upgrade it. In fact, we want to thank Wareham, who has been really the impetus uh, behind this for us uh, and a valued partner. Uh, that will make us uh, a better, faster, stronger, uh, for those who remember the $6 million man, and uh, really think that we'll be able to get into the next century. However, we're going to be having a little bit of downtime, so we're going to lose a little revenue while we're upgrading, uh, and so that's the reflection there. The next item uh, is the extension service program. Uh, some of you, when you came in, I, I handed a bill for $500. Uh, we're asking you to contribute to some of the programs that are run in the towns, uh, but this is revenue we derive from, from you folks and also from UMass uh, for covering the cost of some of the operations and salaries of 
uh, the program that's run here at Plymouth County. Miss Yes. And, and through the chair, when go, you go ahead. It, we're asking you to contribute. It's not option, right? We, we want the 500, it has to come. Right? We do, yes. It's a bill. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. We sent a bill. Oh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Next item is uh, miscellaneous income. <laughs> Uh, that's a rough guess on our part. Uh, you can see that usually it's around 20000 One year we had uh, in FY17, if you look back, you'll see we had uh, a big increase, and uh, that was because we had an insurance payment uh, that came in for some damage to one of our buildings. Uh, interest income, interest rates are up slightly, so we expect that that will go up slightly. Uh, and then rent at 32 Belmont, uh, that's a building that we own in Brockton, uh, and uh, the commissioners have done a good job rehabilitating, renovating uh, that location. The Register of Deeds operates a satellite office there, uh, but we have some tenants and we expect to draw about 10,000 in revenue this year. We hope it'll be more in subsequent years. Uh, West Elm Street is zero because we sold the building, so we're not gonna collect any rent from the building we don't own. It's only on there because it hasn't fleshed out through uh, and we want all the numbers to match at the bottom. Oberry Street is a uh, rent that the register charges at the Registry Deeds in Plymouth to uh, title examiners, mm -hmm. title company, uh, for use of uh, some of the conference rooms and some of the space over there. Rent here uh, is charged to uh, Entergy for use of the basement where they have their emergency operations center. I do want to caution everybody in the audience that uh, I believe this is the last year of our contract. As we know, uh, Entergy is uh, rolling up the carpet, as they say, uh, so we expect that number to disappear as a revenue source, which of course presents a challenges in which we're trying to plan for. Um, next item are cell towers. We own cell towers in Plymouth and in Hanson, uh, and the cell phone companies uh, pay rent for that. Uh, and that is that number. It's a long-term agreement, so you'll see that number uh, remains the same for a number of years. MMH re MMHG reimbursement is Maytham and Health Group, as the chairman mentioned. Uh, we do the uh, operations through our employees of that. They reimburse us for that. Uh, our staff does an incredible job. That's dollar in, dollar out. Uh, administrative fee to Mayfield Municipal Health Group is really the financial services. We get reimbursed for my office and my team providing all the financial services for the Mayfield Municipal Health Group. If you're not a participant, it's a $110 million uh, joint purchase group for health insurance for municipal employees uh, in and around the Plymouth County area. And it has been hugely successful. I'd love to chat about that at some point in time. Uh, real asset disposition, um, the only thing there uh, it turns out that Plymouth County owns a parcel of land in the town of Halifax in conjunction with the town of Halifax, which the Divisionary, Division of Fisheries and Wildlife would like to purchase. So we're working with Halifax to sell that. This would be our portion of that sale, uh, which we expect to matriculate into the next fiscal year. And then unappropriated fund balance from previous fiscal year, 250000 one-time monies. Uh, that we're putting into the budget for FY20. Uh, so that's the uh, revenues in a big nutshell. Any questions for the commissioner? Um, the, uh, the last item, the one-time money, the one-time money, you put, oh, the one -time money. You are putting that in and using it in the general fund to backfill what you need for expense, you know, for possible expenses? So the original intent uh, <laughs> and I'll let the commissioner speak on this if they want, was to put it into stabilization fund as a one-time money. Um, and so that was that. However, there are one-time expenditures that we have. It is not intended to go into operations. Okay, because you never use one-time money for a recurring operation. I absolutely agree with that. Thank you. John? John Tom, I, I don't know what's the kind of way and how they handle their parking system down there. But my experience has been is that the Plymouth Growth and Development Corporation handles the downtown parking situation in Plymouth. It's uh, pretty talented, pretty efficient, and they're always uh, investing in cutting edge technology. So I don't know if you've ever reached out to them for advice, but I'm not going to have that uh, pretty good office on the community. Great. We appreciate that. We have been in contact with them, and uh, they do uh, a lot of great things. One of our challenges is we have some smaller communities than Plymouth, uh, and so. Um, we need to find and effectuate those costs, but uh, we have been in touch with them and continue to be. So thank you for that. Did I see any further questions? No? Commissioner, did you want to? No. Nope. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Seeing no further questions, uh, present an oral motion to adopt the uh, revenues as presented. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
All right. Let me stay right there and ready the next one. Mr. Mm -hmm. Treasurer. Uh, so the next one is the budget. I, I left my agenda back in the okay. back row there. Is that the next item on the... No, I think it's... Uh, 64 d the deeds. So uh, this, you vote every year. It's an apportionment of uh, revenue that's required by statute. There's a motion written which needs to be read by a member of the advisory board, uh, and it apportions it between the registry and the county. Uh, I would ask that one of the members of the advisory board go ahead and read it and uh, apportion it. It, again, it's based on the revenue projections and something that's done every year. Um, just before we do that, register. Uh, did you did you want to be heard on any of this before we go ahead? I'm not on a particular vote. Okay. Right Motion to approve the amount of one million three hundred twenty thousand and no cents, representing the county sixty percent of the ten point six two five percent of deeds excise tax revenue which will be generated according to Chapter 64D as shown in the total income figure for the operation of the County of Plymouth for fiscal year July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. That's a second. Of a motion. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. And the motion passes unanimously. Uh, all opposed. Right. Motion passes unanimously. <laughs> we just need that for the records. That's all right. Thank you. You all will have our heads. Well, it's nice that we have 76.89% of uh, our voting members here, so. And uh, similarly, moving right on to the next one. Go ahead. Motion to approve the amount of $880,000 and no cents, representing the Registry of Deeds, 40% of the 10.625% of deeds excise tax revenue, which will be generated according to Chapter 64D as shown in the total income figure for the operation of the uh, County of Plymouth for fiscal year July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And now we're on to the budget, Mr. Treasurer. And I don't know if this is, you want me to present the budget, Commissioners? As an added you seem to be well suited. <laughs> yeah. I at least knew to come to the mic, Mr. Commissioner. <laughs> um, let's go through this quickly. Uh, and then, of course, if there are any questions, um, this is the budget as voted on uh, by the Commissioners at uh, the meeting on May 30th, and I think all of you have had a copy. Uh, the first two items are interest in debt and uh, reduction of debt for our uh, bond on the registry of deeds here in Plymouth that will be uh, paid off in 2023. You can see principal remains the same, interest goes down, uh, and uh, so that's fairly simple and straightforward. Commissioner's office, you'll see a uh, modest increase there. Um, the increases in, in many of these, if not most of them, our, our contractual increases and they're contractually driven uh, with our union members. Uh, the commissioners have done an excellent job of negotiating a contract. Uh, they negotiated a three-year contract at zero percent increases. Um, however, they have steps uh, and those steps average, Frank, is about 2.75 uh, percent. Uh, so these increases cover that. You will notice that there is a modest increase in the commissioner's salary. Uh, the commissioners weren't necessarily in favor of that. I think it's something that was important. It was something I advocate for. Mm -hmm. You'll recall that there was a discussion a number of years ago for a much bigger increase, uh, and this group decided to have it phased in. Uh, so this is a modest increase from 20,000 to 22,500. If I could, as, as we go, if you have a question on any aspect, just tell me a question, I'll come back to you on, on that aspect. So I know you have a question on that one. We'll come back to it at the end. Uh, parking department, uh, the increase there is the one-time expenditure on upgraded technology uh, that we're going to put. Again, it's one-time monies uh, that we're going to be using there to upgrade uh, that program uh, through the various uh, vendors. Building maintenance, uh, you'll see a bit of a decrease there. Uh, even though we've added a team member in the maintenance department, we've added a new person, uh, the decrease is the result of some one-time projects that were budgeted in FY19 that aren't there in FY20. Engineering department um, is something that we're beginning to try and fund. It's to cover the cost of appraisals and other engineering that the county commissioners may be asked to do uh, on their properties or around the county. Fairly straightforward in a small number. Cooperative extension service, again, you see modest increase, and that's largely the result of the contractual uh, agreements with uh, the employees in that department. Contractual expenses, uh, you'll actually see uh, that that went down a whopping $1,000. Uh, we were actually able to save some money on one of our insurances, uh, and so we reflect that there. Fire control airplane, you'll see an increase of $1,000. So, well, we save it one place, we spend it another. Uh, the folks that do the uh, fire control airplane, and I know we have some of the representatives on the team, they do such a fantastic job 
uh, and it's a fire spotting airplane. I know that uh, the chiefs may or may not want to talk about it, uh, but the increase uh, is for uh, some of the uh, cost of manning the flights, uh, personnel costs, but it's really modest. Uh, the regional services department, that increases the grant writer that I spoke about earlier. You'll see that if you flip to that page. Uh, county dredge, dollar in, dollar out. So we're expecting $25,000 in expense and revenue. Treasurer's office, uh, you'll see a decrease, and that's, oh, sorry. Back to the dredge. Dredge, dredge. Oh, you too. Sorry about that, Ted, I should have. Um, Treasurer's office, you'll see a decrease. Uh, we had two retirements in my department. Uh, the commissioners asked me to effectuate some economies of scale, uh, working closely with uh, the administrator and his team in the union. Uh, we were able to consolidate one position, uh, and so uh, that's where we're effectuating the savings. Fairly straightforward. Uh, the county retirement system, again, you'll see uh, a relatively modest increase. However, if you go to that page, you'll see the commissioners are dedicating uh, $650,000 as a prepayment of our pension system. We understand that by prepaying, we're reducing a long-term obligation. We're getting the benefit of the significant return from the retirement system. Uh, so we certainly uh, are, are very pleased with that, and it, it certainly helps our financial review and our financial uh, standing. <coughs> the OPEB uh, liability trust fund, a modest increase to that, uh, which obviously we want to continue to make. Um, we belong, <coughs> as the chairman said, uh, participate in PCOT which is a group that was created on January 15, 2015, uh, and our returns have been uh, hugely successful and encourage anybody who's interested to look into it as an option. Well, I know many of you in this room are. I have to thank Wareham, and I don't know if uh, Carver is here, but they were two of the early adopters, and Wareham has had particular success, uh, not only with the rate of return they're getting, but on their bond rating. Um, registry of Deeds, uh, I, the, again, same as others, a modest increase. Uh, largely the result of contractual, if not entirely the result of contractual obligations uh, to the employees. Mayflower Municipal Health Group, dollar in, dollar out. We're expecting to spend. Yeah, I got a question on Mayflower. Mayflower. <clears throat> on Mayflower, the three token. Uh, dollar in, dollar out. And then special accounts, uh, you'll see a little bit of an increase, uh, predominantly health insurance, although the commissioners did, and I, I, I neglected to mention this at the executive meeting, the commissioners did increase modestly the firefighter training program uh, the donation there from 8,000 to 10,000. Um, so, uh, again, um, oh, and the big increase there, of course, is the contribution to the stabilization fund. So you'll see, if you flip to the very last page, 47, uh, they're putting in 180,000 into the stabilization fund, uh, which is a very responsible thing to do. All right, so let's go back to question one, Mr. Mahoney. Uh, we had a question on the uh, county commissioner's salary. Uh, speak Absolutely. Okay. Take it if you want. <clears throat> so, good evening, everyone. John Mahoney from Plymouth. And some of you have been in the room for the last uh, five years. You probably can predict what I'm going to say. But uh, a couple of things. A couple of years ago, the town of Plymouth commissioned a compensation study or wage and classification study for the employees in Plymouth. And it came back and it basically said from top to bottom, we're at, we, we don't pay. Predominantly in the police department and in the, with the teachers. Uh, we ended up negotiating a contract where we went 222 in, in, in exchange for the compensation study where we couldn't give them above 2% COLA. We kept their health care flat for three years. So two, 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 no changes to health care for three years, and we put that contract to bed. And in that contract, everybody still gets their steps. So the other thing I'd like to say is that uh, Mr. O'Brien, Mr. Pallotta, and Mr. Hanley were at Pember uh, Plymouth Town Hall today. And um, you know, one of the things I've been involved in and advocated for is handling uh, tax revenue responsibly. And we have a $54 million brand new town hall that wouldn't have happened, and I said that uh, before this meeting, and I'll say it again on camera, wouldn't have happened without the county commissioners and the leadership of Tom O'Brien 10 to 11 years ago. Uh, that is a visionary proactive project, $54 million brand new town hall paid for entirely with no property taxes local meals tax option, earmarked into its own separate fund, not allowed to go into the general fund, like that gentleman from Whitman just mentioned, because we believe in the responsible handling of money. And 
Dan was up here earlier and he talked about all the positive things that the commission has done, and that's accurate. We've done a lot of po positive things in Plymouth, but we don't construct the budget beginning with a raise for the executive branch. So I came here in 2013. Um, there was a 100% uh, raise promote, uh, put on the table for the commissioners to go from 7,500 to 15,150. Uh, it passed. Uh, the town of Plymouth voted against it. And then obviously we're at the Kingston Townhouse uh, roughly two years ago today where they wanted to go from 15,150 to 28,000. Um, we didn't support it. It got shot down. And um, I think uh, Mr. Gallagher from uh, Bridgewater made a motion to take them to 20,000 even. So we're here for another roughly 8 to 9 percent raise. Um, I would prefer that they stay at 20 percent. I completely, I, it's a $10.47 million budget at ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 with 80 percent contribution for health care. They're already overcompensated. And uh, we don't support another $2,500, and I'd rather see that go into a COLA for the current employees or, or put it into stabilization. So I would make that motion accordingly that we keep their pay at $20,000. I'll second. I wanted to have some, some conversation. John, why don't you hang on to your motion for a minute? I wanted to give them an opportunity to respond. Yes. Please. Yeah, I'm going to give the same uh, speech I gave before uh, when Mr. Gallagher made his motion, which was to, uh, this is not a pay increase, this is a restoration of pay that was cut by myself when I was sitting in Mr. Bradley's chair, because the county commissioners had run the county to the ground with a $2 million deficit on a $10 million budget, and when this three group, these three commissioners got in here, Bills hadn't been paid for six months. It was a mess. We vowed as the advisory board back then to restore the pay. Yes, we asked for it in Kingston. No, you didn't give us the restoration of pay. You gave a portion of it. And Mr. Gallagher mm -hmm. said, let's do it over a number of years. We didn't ask for it last year because we didn't think it was appropriate last year. So. It's entirely up to you whether you want to, to restore the pay. If you don't, you don't. If you do, you do. It's entirely up to you. But it's the promise of the advisory board that cut it. <coughs> that is the reason why that the, the, the stepped increase has come back. And that w w request came from Councillor uh, from Bridgewater. So, you know, it's entirely up to you. Just like every line item in this budget, you can do whatever you would like to do. So I just wanted to tell you where it was coming from. All of the non-union, non-graded employees, we put raises in, just so that, you know, in this budget, because they hadn't gotten raises for two years. So this, this is the reason why it was put in there. Uh, Treasurer O'Brien and then, and then you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you to Selectman for Mahoney for the kind words and for remembering. I just wanted to let everybody here know uh, a couple of things. One, uh, this wasn't built in at the start of the budget. Uh, this is a very hard budget process. The administrator and I worked closely to put together a budget. I can tell you after doing all that, this was the final consideration uh, because there were some monies available. Uh, we thought it was uh, a very reasonable and prudent thing in fact, sometimes over the objection of the commissioners. I've watched over the last three years these commissioners make some very hard decisions. Hard decisions that I know in other municipalities and even at the state, and for those of you who don't know, I had the pleasure of serving on Beacon Hill for 10 years, have a very hard time making. Uh, their decisions uh, to forego programs that your constituents want to put money into stabilization. Their decisions to deal with very difficult union negotiations to make sure you pre-fund OPEP. OPEP, their decisions to deal with real estate challenges and problems to make sure you're pre-funding your pension. Uh, those are hard decisions to make, and yet they stick to their guns, they make them. Uh, I quite candidly think, particularly given the work over the last three or four years, uh, not only do they deserve this modest increase, they deserve more. Sir? <coughs> <clears throat> yeah, my name is Dan Salvucci. I'm vice chair of both Selectman Town of Whitman. Um, I think it was myself and Dan, the two Dans, that uh, 
motion way back when to cut the commissioner's salaries down to bare bottom what the state only allowed. We can only go down so much. Stating that uh, we wouldn't increase it, bring it back, until they started doing their job. Well, as the gentleman, from, the second from Plymouth said, they are doing their job, right? Saying how they built a, a building and, and didn't cost the taxpayers any money or the Plymouth County uh, contributions any money. They built it with the monies that they were able to uh, obtain, not to the taxpayers. So they are doing their job. They, we hadn't had audits done in I don't know how many years. They're finally the audits are there. We're following the, the, the rules and regulations. There was at one time a push to get rid of county government because it wasn't doing their job. But now they are doing their job. So why wouldn't we reward them for doing what they're supposed to be doing? And I said that uh, we also made a promise that when they started doing their job, we would go back and reconsider and bring back their raises of, to what they were making, God, 10 years ago. Right? Has it been that a long time? Daniel, getting old. I know. We're <laughs> so I mean, right? I mean, this is this is the this is what we told them we would do, if in fact they did what they were supposed to be doing and what their job was supposed to be, and they have been. And as you know, I mean, we've had our commissioners voted and and and, and revoted in. We've had some commissioners of past that weren't doing their job, and you notice they're not sitting there because they weren't doing their job. Now the, the gentlemen, the commissioners that are there have been doing their job, they're being reelected because they are doing their job and I think we need to reward them. That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. Sir? My name is Ted Flynn, selectman from Duxbury and I seconded the motion. But I want to make it clear in the record that this is no reflection on the commissioners who I think are doing a good job. My issue is this. We run a $78 million budget in Duxbury with three selectmen and a stipend, a very small stipend. We're talking about a $10 million budget. And quite frankly, I can't get my head around paying up to $28,000 to the commissioners when we have very professional staff at every level doing a good job, as are the commissioners, as overseers but they're overseeing a $10 million budget. And I can't support it at the rate that uh, is suggested. Thanks, sir. Anybody else from, uh, from the body? Any, anybody from uh, the advisory board would like to make any comments? <clears throat> Three years ago, we had a discussion through the advisory board and I was on the board at the time we cut it down to 7500 because the commissioners, in fact, weren't doing what they were supposed to do. They weren't doing the audits. They weren't dealing with the towns the way they should have been dealing with. I've been impressed with the county commissioners that we have right now because they, in fact, are doing the jobs. And they're not asking for a raise. They're asking to re reinstate what the salary was. The salary was voted years ago at 28000 even when they, the county commissioners weren't doing it, even when they were voting, had a vote to disband county government, as several other counties have been done. I think they deserve the money. <clears throat> I'm not going to say they deserve more because they need to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> but on a serious note, they deserve the money. And if you count it over, they haven't got a crease in three years where all the people that are working for them, in fact, have got increases, whether they be union or whatever, in contracts. So I feel very strongly that, that we should, at this point, vote in a positive manner towards this increase. Okay. The motion would be the I'm not there. Okay. Did you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, so, so my name is Bob Sullivan, <coughs> and I've sat on the advisory board for over 12 years now. I'm a counselor at large in the city of Brockton for 14 years. Um, I was there that night. It used to be toxic. I used to hate driving to these meetings. <laughs> Honest to God. I mean, anybody that was there knew it. I mean, it was real hatred and anger, and it just wasn't professional. We're all public servants. That's why we run, right? To represent the best interest of our constituency. There was a pledge made at that time. We have to honor the pledge. That's the right thing to do. At the end of the day, it's a $10 million budget. This isn't a heck of a lot of the money raised. It's more than I get as a city council in the city of Brockton, but I don't represent only 
one municipality. They're representing the interests of the whole county. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna support it. I think it's the right thing. The treasurer has, has certified the budget, and I think we need to honor the pledge of people that were here, like myself, and those that are representing the interest of the advisory board. Thank you. Well, just taking a, the last liberty here, I, I also support the increase. Uh, the bulk of the conversation from the, the last time we addressed this, uh, as people have already said, was the preference was to graduate on a gradual scale increasing. And that's what I see them doing. Uh, they're not asking for exorbitant amount of money. Um, they're not even asking to, to be restored to the 28.5, I think it was at the time. So I think it's reasonable, uh, it's measured. So I, I ask you to support, uh, support it as is. That being said, uh, if nobody has any further questions or comments, um, we have a motion that has been seconded on the floor. Uh, could you repeat the motion, Mr. Moore? The motion is to remove $7,500 from the budget to leave it and pay $20,000. And that motion again was seconded. Uh, so I call for a vote on that motion. All in favor? Is this roll call? We'll need a roll call because it's okay. not going to be unanimous. That's correct. All right. So um, let's do a roll call vote on that. Uh, so I'll read the roll call. So, for so just to be clear, if yes. you want the commissioners to get a raise, you vote no. If you want them not to get a raise, you vote yes. Good. All right. So Abington. No. Bridgewater. No. Brockton. No. Cava. <clears throat> Duxbury. Yes. East Bridgewater. Halifax. No. Hanover. No. Hanson. No. Hanson is no. Uh, Hingham. No. Hall. Kingston? No. Lakeville? No. Marion? No. Marshfield? No. Mattapoison? Middleborough? No. Norwell? Pembroke? Yes. Plymouth? Yes. Plimpton? Rochester? No. Rockland? Situate, Wayham, no. West Bridgewater, no. Whitman, no. Uh, motion failed. Nice. Twenty-one point eight nine to uh, affirmative. Fifty-six point six eight in the negative. Okay. Moving on. We have another question on the county dredge program, and I think that was uh, Duxbury as well. Did you have a question on the county dredge program? Yeah, I was just okay. wondering if, if is, is that being funded by the town that we had the agreement with because there's no salaries in there for the dredge staff. Who wants to take that, Commissioner? Oh, uh, you're learning, huh? I'm walking all the way over. <laughs> uh, there are no salaries associated with it. Uh, the dredge actually has worked this year, um, and um, we are working on additional communities. We're taking a slow approach as we indicated we would. We're letting the communities actually use the equipment and they're staffing it themselves, getting their own permits. Uh, it was wildly successful in Howich, which is not a Plymouth County town, but they were the closest community that had permits in hand. Okay? Great, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bob. So, a follow up question. Uh, does that have to do with the South River dredging? That's going to be happening soon. No, the South River dredging is being done by the Army Corps of Engineers, and it's my understanding that was all arranged with the Army Corps. That's similar to Plymouth Harbor. I can speak to that. It is. It's definitely through the yeah. Corps. Okay. All right, and we had a further question on the Mayflower Municipal Group. I'm not sure. There you go, Mr. Gallagher. Um, just a simple question on the Mayflower Group. I know that they, <clears throat> I don't know who wants to answer it, um, on the <laughs> Their location used to be with the uh, retirement office over there on uh, in Portage Park, and they did move out. Looking through the budget, I didn't see any line item where they pay rent to where they are. I just don't know how that is handled. Yeah, great question. And for those that are members of the Mayfair Municipal Health Group, you should know they've moved. Uh, they were, uh, as Mr. Gallagher mentions, in uh, 10 Portage Park. They're now at 65 Portage Park, which is right behind ten in one of those buildings. Uh, that's all part of the monthly warrant that's paid for out of the operational expenses of the Mayflower Group as a whole. 
Uh, what we are responsible for the Mayflow Group are the employees and the staff. And so that's predominant and the operational needs of those employees and that staff. So the rent comes out of the monthly warrant being paid by the Mayflow Municipal Health Group. Thank you. All right. So I think that was our last question, unless I missed something. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have a motion and amendment that I'd like to introduce on behalf of Commissioner Pollock. Uh, go ahead, so, uh, sir. Why don't we come on up? Or would you like me to get up to do that? Or? Yeah, why don't we come on up okay. so we'll be televised. We'll get it all on record. Mm -hmm. Good evening. So, I'm John Tuzik from Hanover. Uh, so, uh, so again, Mr. Pallotta has asked me to introduce this motion, which I think uh, probably deserves consideration uh, by the body. Uh, the motion would be to amend Department 34, the Registry of Deeds, line item 100, permanent employees, by deleting in its entirety the sum of $1,998,574.24 and inserting the sum of $1,963,474.24 in place thereof. To further amend Department 34, Registry of Deeds, page 42, personal services by deleting after the words TBD vacant index compare, the sum of 35,000 and inserting the sum of zero in place thereof. To amend Department 99, special accounts, line item 18, group insurance by deleting in its entirety the sum of 2,482,131.92 and inserting the sum of 2,447,131.92 in place thereof. And finally, to amend Department 99 Special Accounts, line item 24, Reserve Stabilization Fund, by deleting in its entirety the sum of $180,000 and inserting the sum of $250,000 in place thereof. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That is a motion. Is there a second on the motion? I'll go, I'll go to some conversation. All right. Is there a second on that motion? I'll second it. Okay. Motion and second. Let's open it up for some conversation on the motion. May I, may I yes. Hand up the motion. Please. And I'd like one to see that last question. Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, while you're passing out the uh, amendments, uh, this is the first time in a long time that the commissioners disagreed on the budget. Um, the budget was submitted was a two to one vote. Uh, the commissioners in the majority submitted to a good budget. If you voted, the world's not going to come to an end. So I don't want to pretend that it will. Um, the amendment that I have before you is a retirement. And it is the goal of this commissioner to not, f not fill the retired position in the next fiscal year. Uh, the, the registry of deeds, um, as well as all county departments need to rethink how they deliver their services. Okay? I handed you out a, a liability versus revenue sheet, which is in white. That sheet um, was actually voted by you guys, I think, in 18 or 19, and we called it Scenario 4, uh, which was going to prevent the county from hitting a cliff in 2000. And 22. The first sheet shows you that if you vote the budget as it is printed in the blue book, uh, by 2029, it'll be four million and four hundred and three thousand dollar deficit. Now, obviously, we'll we'll accommodate in ten years ways to slow that down. But if we just took the budget we passed today and funded it continually, it would be four million four hundred and three thousand five hundred and forty-five. The second page, scenario 4.5, that number is 2.949. That delta is that one position and the pension liability and the OPEB liability associated with that one position over those numbers of years. Why am I doing this? Because it doesn't affect an employee, and in my opinion, the, the register who will argue against this 
can reapportion and do this with the 37 remaining employees at the registry. If we don't do this, there will be a bigger problem next year. As Selectman Mahoney uh, indicated, $250,000 of surplus is a one-time revenue. So this position was the position that was funded with the one-time revenue. Okay? So that became 180. This brings it back to Selectman Mahoney's 250. All right? Do I think we can uh, find other ways to effectuate that $70,000? Probably. Do I think the, the methodology to which we are working under will continue if we fund this position? Yes. We need to change the way we're doing business. This is a long-term request from you, not a short-term, I'm mad at the registrar. I love the registrar. Everyone in this room loves the registrar. All right? All right. I love the registry of deeds, what they do. However, I'd like you not to fund that position for one year. If the Registry of Deeds money comes back, it comes back. If it doesn't, we have to deal with a different problem next year. Thank you for your time. Mr. Register. So hello everyone, I'm John Buckley. I'm the elected Registrar Deeds. I was re-elected last fall um, unopposed to the registry because people like what we do at the Registry of Deeds. We have an office here in Plymouth, two satellites, one in Brockton, recently renovated and part, uh, great thanks to the commissioners and a satellite in Rockland. We're responsible for millions of land records all across Plymouth County. Every single deed, mortgage, anything related to real estate gets recorded in our office. And it's not a simple task. Many people have gone to real estate closings. You go in, you sign a lot of documents. The lawyer goes downstairs and puts it on record. And you go home and uh, the sellers get the check, the realtors get the check, and everyone goes off. Our responsibility is to ensure that all of those real estate assets are protected in a title that is absolutely secure. It takes people to do that. You don't have robots that are able to do uh, the recordings at the Registry of Deeds. When people come into the building, they, they record a document. It takes a recorder to make sure it meets all of the standards as required to record a deed. Some of them are rejected because they don't meet the standards of a registry of deeds. Those individuals are trained people, individuals that have to come in and do it. Uh, the next step is the image gets scanned so it's available as an uh, image over the internet the next day. So everyone can go online and search their records uh, the next day. The next uh, position is the one that, that is currently vacant based on a retirement. Um, that is the index uh, information. It's one thing to record a document, but without a proper and perfect index system, you will never find the documents in the future. Um, we only have a, a certain number of people doing that job, and it, it has to be done in order to perfect the real estate title. Uh, it then goes off to a system where every single document at the registry gets microfilmed, it's required by state law that we have a backup system in the event of a disaster at the registry. Um, what is before you today and was supported by the commissioners, granted two out of the three commissioners, is a level funded budget. My budget increased by 0.12% over last year based upon contractual steps. Um, asking for a level funded budget in this time is not a uh, outrageous claim in any way. Um, there are other parts of the budget that you saw that are interrelated to the operation of the county. The county is putting $180,000 that it did not do last year into stabilization, which is really retirement. The, the, the large amount of money the treasurer talked about going in to prepaying the retirement is included in this budget. Um, 
what we're talking about here uh, as a percentage of the total budget is a minimal and minuscule amount of money. Um, so what I'm, what I'm advocating for, what Commissioner Wright and Commissioner Hanley agreed with me after my presentation was to maintain um, a level funded budget. In the past, we've had made cuts and some of you were here for that. When I was elected to office, we had 62 employees. We now have 38. We've dealt with those cuts over the years. We've made the modifications over the years and we've continued to make changes at the registry to cross train people in different departments. But it's not always an easy task. And when you're trying to cover uh, the, the bumps of real estate over the years, um, real estate's a very fluctuating um, uh, process over the years based upon the economy and other issues. Uh, you need to have trained staff that have been trained in order to do the job. Um, so I ask that uh, you do not support uh, the motion on the floor to cut our budget when it's unnecessary to cut the budget. There have been other retirement uh, in parking that they're filling. Uh, if they're going to eliminate all retirements, um, that would be a different story. But there's no reason just to single out the registry deeds. And um, I know that uh, the two commissioners that supported the budget wanted to add a comment on this. Sandra Wright, if she could follow up. <coughs> and then you around for any questions. Commissioner Wright. Thank you. Um, the, one of the reasons why I voted to level fund this uh, position was because Mr. Buckley did not ask for us to put another position in place. It's already been there. Um, and look, overlooking the budget, and it just didn't make sense to me. We're hiring, or we did hire a uh, grant writer for $50,000, which we have no idea how much money that grant writer is going to bring into us. So it, it's just a trial right now. And to squabble about a $30,000 position, I just didn't feel that it was right. I voted uh, to level fund it because Mr. Buckley had asked for us to do that. Uh, not just because he asked for it, but I sat with him. I understood where he was coming from, what he thought, what his budget was. Also, I went home and I started thinking about looking for the future, into the future, uh, and where we might be. Mr. Buckley has, uh, and I don't want to say an older staff, but uh, people who are going to be coming up probably quickly uh, in retirement and not funding these positions. We could end up in the f uh, future with a lot of people retiring quickly and not have the staffing to uh, fulfill what he needs to uh, run not only the Plymouth office but two satellites. So I would ask that you don't vote for this and um, I you know, do agree that we should level fund it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Hanley, and then I'll, I'll take your question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the advisory, Greg Hanley, County Commissioner. I rise in support of uh, the registrar for a number of reasons. First of all, it was a level funded budget. That was a simple request. Just give me the tools that I've had last year and I'll do the best I can. I'm a big believer in managers should manage, especially a duly elected public official. In this instance, technology is an improvement in a lot of cases, but in this particular position, it takes eyes. And we all know what spell check, how many times we've sent out letters and the computer fixes it. I can't tell you how many times I've texted with these fat fingers to say to people, hey, this is not what I meant. You need eyes to review the documents. So from that point of view, uh, lastly, the position that is being vacated by an experienced person uh, who <coughs> represents a significant more amount of money because of experience is being lost. My understanding with this individual in her retirement, she was doing the job of equivalent of three people. I'll figure that out. We're going to bring someone in brand new to be trained. It's going to take a number of years for that person to come up to speed. What do you lose in utility? What do you lose in value for an experienced person to go and review those documents? And for those reasons, I supported the budget. I don't um, disagree with the uh, chairman 
for economies of scale that can be gained in this particular instance for the last 10 years of revenue generation this department has supported the county when uh, deeds excise taxes uh, are unfairly reapportioned 25 years after the state starts taking away our money um, we filed legislation to uh, fix that inequity and the, and the good thing is this a year from now you get to review this decision last couple of years we've had money because we've had a robust real estate market and it generates uh, income from refis and sales of homes so with that a year from now uh, if you, you decide that uh, you don't want to do it because the revenues projected, as the treasurer has said, these guys have been spot on on their projections. We know fairly certain in time for the budget to make an informed decision on where we should go. And so I could keep talking, but I'll talk my way right out of a vote. So with that, good luck to you, uh, Mr. Registrar. I support you when you talk. Thank you, Commissioner. Just to have one quick thing before the um, okay. members talk. Um, we have been at the cutting edge of technology. We recently uh, achieved that every single um, document back to 1686, the founding of the county is available over the internet. Uh, that's been my goal since the registry to get every single hard copy document at the registry available to search over the internet. We recently uh, implemented electronic recording for land court. We started electronic recording. That's a recording for lawyers to record from their office over the internet. We started doing that with land court about six months ago. I'm chair of the statewide registers technology committee. If there was a technology solution to reduce people, I'd be the first to support it. But you need <coughs> bodies to run our office and not the time to start cutting bodies when we're trying to get um, things accomplished like we are uh, today. So I appreciate your consideration, um, and I know others wanted to speak. Thank you, Ms. Buckley. Ms. Gallagher. Uh, Dennis Gallagher, uh, Councilman in Bridgewater. Um, just a couple of questions and one, one point. And I do go back, that was 10 years ago when we had all these tough discussions about the budget and we started to talk about people. And at that time, and I think Treasurer O'Brien remembers this, is that the council, the town attorney at that time said it's not the advisory board's responsibility or role to go into the weeds and line items of a particular budget to make recommendations on. It's up to the county advisory board to vote a bottom line for a department, not to go in and say line item 100, we want to reduce this position because there was a positions that were being talked about by a commissioner to eliminate and the town attorney said at that time that the role of the county advisory board is to vote a bottom line for each department not to start going into the line items so that's one point i want to make um, and i can't support this motion because there is another step that happens after we leave here today and that is when the when any department hires someone a personnel status form has to go before the commissioners at that point, they can put the kibosh on the hiring if they want to. I don't think we need to, we need to set that uh, tone here unless we want to reduce the bottom line of his budget and then let him manage the money that we approve for him the way he thinks he should. That's really our role. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Salvucci? Yes. <clears throat> Anybody that knows me, whose glasses are these, by the way? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work for me. <laughs> Never lose your glasses. I put mine on in the morning, I take them off when I go to bed at night. Um, everybody knows I, I always support uh, our registry of deeds uh, drawn because of the fact that you never bite the hand that feeds you. Dan, you and I, we always agree on a lot of things, but not on this. My theory is... Well, John has just said that over the years, he's cut his staff in half from 60 employees to 30-something employees. Yes, I agree. With, with the computer age, it takes less, you know, people can do a lot of their own work by themselves. But I'd like to ask anybody in this, in this room who is a town official, has anybody cut their, any one of their departments by 50%? I mean... You know, our police and fire, everything's a lot easier because of the fact that they have computers and 911 and they get the call earlier. 
and they can get their children. But did I cut my fire department in half? Absolutely not. We increase it. I'm surprised that John is not asking for an increase for somebody to train this person to get the job done because they're not going to be as efficient as the employee that is retiring. But he's not. And basically, he's looking for a level staff, a level funded um, department. But basically, we're handing out raises, not colas, but steps raises. So basically, his department is being cut, his percentage, because he has to deal with the increases of the present employees right now with what the monies he had last year. So basically, he's, you know, he's working, he's got to find a way of paying his present employees their raises, call it whether it's COLA or STEP, or with the money that he was allotted last year. So basically, it's almost like a cut in his budget. So I think that we need this person. It's proven that they are doing their job, and she's, the person's doing the job of, you're saying, almost like three people. But, I mean, why would we cut that position? I think, uh, <laughs> sorry, Dan, I cannot support this. It's a democracy. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Salvucci. Uh, anybody else from the body? Anybody else from the advisory board? We just have a basic question. If we're showing a $4 million deficit down the line here, <clears throat> we probably in the next year should be having an overall program how we're going to take care of this. You know, right now in this first year, it really isn't going to make much of a difference because you're still okay with the stabilization fund. But when you get to around 2022, 23, you're going to have to make some changes. So you're going to have to plan it out. I think this one piece isn't enough for a plan because you're still looking at, excuse me, uh, almost three million dollars deficit. So this is not going to solve much of anything. So right. for Mr. one year, you can do it, but that you've got to start now to figure out what you're going to do in the next couple of years. Go ahead, Go ahead. I don't enjoy doing this. I don't want to. I don't want to cut in, uh, any people. And uh, that, that was the impetus of my request. This is a retirement. Uh, this did not come out of the blue. Um, we had two retirements in the treasurer's office. We tasked the treasurer with coming back with a better way of doing business. He came back with one person, and we eliminated a position. Nobody in here cried about it. Okay, it was in your budget and you did it. We tasked the, the, the register to do the same and he came back and said he couldn't. Okay, I can tell you, you're going to be forced to do it next year or the year after and it's going to be bigger because look at the revenues that you voted. These excise is down, recording fees are down. Okay, and that's that we're in a cycle. You want to know why we established the stabilization fund? It's against the law for us to save money prior to the, us passing that law three years ago. Do you know why we're banking the money? Because we know there's going to be a year that we have to dip into that money to operate the county. And that will be a fun night, but it's coming. And that's why we're banking it. This is a small piece. You're correct. I'm asking to address it beginning today, not in a year. But you, and, and you're correct, Dennis. The commissioners could, in fact, not sign that CPS form. I will not. All right? But not because I don't think John needs the person. He needs the person. He needs it. We've tried for eight years to get the Commonwealth to change the funding formula for the county. Look in your, look in your books. Our budget's the same as it was in 2006. Any of your towns even remotely close to your budget in 2006? <clears throat> Absolutely not. We have to continually reflect the times. I'm not happy about this. I'm the bad guy tonight. I'm really the messenger for next year. So you can choose to start tonight, or you can choose to start in a year. But we're going to start. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Right. Um, before he leaves, um, just a question for you to clarify. Um, the deeds excise revenue. Could you give your name and town, sir? Sure. Martha Bettison from Middleborough. Um, the deeds excise revenue is projected at $3.2 million for FY22. Can you explain why it goes down to zero for FY23 and on? Um, 
What, 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 what page you on? The second line of the revenue. Oh, okay, yeah. That's this, so there's a reason why it goes down, and the reason why it goes down is we charge an additional dollar to copy things. In the, right? Isn't this related to the bond? All right, fill, fill me in. You got it backwards? Would the treasurer like to answer this? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I thought this was the I thought this was the extra block that goes away. No, he's asking what goes out. Am I in the wrong line? Oh, okay. The rental gains right. yeah. 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 Oh, someone else. Excuse me. As it expires. The act expires. So as you heard uh, at the beginning. <laughs> 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 As you heard at the beginning, uh, when the state took over the sheriff's department, one of the frustrating components of that was they tried to leave the liability of those employees in our uh, system and make the county responsible for paying that. Uh, fortunately, uh, we were able, with the success and work of our legislative delegation, to get legislation passed. Uh, and that was not easy. And in fact, other counties are still suffering the fact they didn't get legislation passed uh, to require the state through a supplemental deeds excise permission, they allow us to keep more of our deeds excise to pay their obligation to the retirement system. That expires in 2022. So each year right now, we enter into an agreement with a and uh, with PARAC, with the county treasurer, and with uh, the commissioners and with the retirement board, and we sign an agreement, and that agreement allows us to maintain deeds excise to cover the state's portion of that liability. That will be paid off in 2022. So that's why it goes away. It Sorry. has nothing to do with the deeds excise we collect as revenue to the county. So the supplemental deeds excise right now, we're getting in, well, we will get in 3.2 million and then we're paying out, we're only paying out 500,000 for supplemental pension. So right, so that's a supplement. So we're making 2.7 million on the deal. Nope. And let me see if I can articulate that a little better. So in 2022, we're gonna pay three, four, we're getting, <coughs> the supplemental pension, uh, supplemental deeds excise. If you look down under revenues, yep. two nine 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 one one. Our obligation is up top under expenditures three four three three nine six eight. Yep. So the county makes up that difference. Okay. So that's our that's our expenditure. If you go to your budget, you'll see that number in there. And then we add another six fifty that we're prepaying against our pension obligation because we know we need to reduce that pension obligation down the road. Okay, so we're just going to stop prepaying in 2023. Well, we'd love to keep prepaying, but at that point we do. So we understand there is going to be a very difficult challenge in 2024, uh, and we're trying to plan for it. We call that the cliff. Right, because if you still had that exercise, we'd be fine. Right. Yeah. I'd be giving them staff. So if I could just just uh, quickly add a point. Um, we are filling a vacancy in parking. We're adding a position in the pensionable obligation in the grant person, and they're cutting a position at the registry. All I'm asking for is a level-funded budget. I ask you to vote no on the proposal. I saw an additional question, and then Commissioner Halen, did you want to be heard? I had to throw here at the, um, the microphone. I had a question with regard to our legislative update. Okay. And so to, uh, I'm sorry, I missed them. We'll, we'll go take that question, and then I'll, I'll take your question there. Tom, could you just make a question? We all know that these potential pitfalls are coming with loss of revenue and change of personnel. Can you speak to our legislative epic? <coughs> because maintenance of epic was brought up tonight about the retirement of that debt. If it wasn't the work of this commission, it's an county state association and our lobby effort to change the MOE. This this county will still be paying that bill, which goes away in 2023. So just if you could talk to our legislative efforts for the Reapportion of deeds excess. Yeah, and they were significant. Um, so again, in 2010, when the state decided that they would take over the sheriff's department, I have to be careful what I say, um, the state was claiming that it would save money. They said that they were going to save tens of millions, twenties of millions, thirties of millions of dollars by effectuating economies of scale and taking it away. Interestingly enough, as they got into the numbers, they realized that wasn't true. 
it actually is costing the state a lot more to operate the county jail than it did when it was a county jail, a true county jail. The only way that they could make the numbers work was by saying we have these active employees at the jail and we have these retirees. We're going to take the active employees and we're going to take the building, but we're going to leave the retirement costs of these retirees in the county system for all of you to pick up. That's a bad deal. Fortunately, your commissioners and your treasurer understood that was a bad deal, and we began to lobby with the other counties to try and effectuate an understanding at the state level that they should not do that to us. Unfortunately, the other counties struck a deal whereby they felt that they could give up on that issue in exchange for uh, some relief on an object called the maintenance of effort, which was a required payment to the Sheriff's Department by the county. Plymouth County, however, realized that would not be enough and advocated for special legislation just for Plymouth County to require this additional payment. So this additional payment started uh, in 2012. It was for 10 years, so it would be paid off in 2022. That was a remarkably significant accomplishment. Uh, other counties now are looking and saying, boy, we wish we had done that because they're dealing with a significant burden. Understand, too, that the, fun, the, the other benefit that inured to us is our funding schedule in Plymouth County is going to be fully funded by 2029. Um, so we have the state on a earlier funding schedule, so we're getting that money in early. Uh, so it was a really good effort. The commissioners uh, deserve a lot of credit for winding me up and sending me up to the state house uh, almost every day uh, to lobby former colleagues and make sure we got the legislation passed. I can't say enough about our legislative delegation, some of whom have moved on, but they were very instrumental in making sure we got the protection. So understand, that was $32 million that you would have had to pay through your assessments and other things <coughs> that we got the state to recognize they needed to pay. Our current legislative record is what I was really trying to Oh, do. I apologize. I to recap. <laughs> oh, that's great. It was nice to get the game to death. <laughs> Just talk about in, in anticipation of what's coming. Okay. Um, so as you understand, there are two main revenue streams here. Uh, for the county that we get. One, our recording fees. One, our deeds excise. I'll focus on recording fees because that's the new effort that we have here. Um, and that, I'm sorry, on deeds excise because that's a new effort we have here uh, that the group has collectively focused in on and the Plymouth County Commissioners have taken a leadership role. Uh, deeds excise was originally envisioned as a 50-50 proposition, 50% to the state and 50 to the county. Dan Salvucci is nodding and, and shaking his head <laughs> because some of you who are new could guess at what that percentage is now because the state needed money. It's now 89.345 or 375, and we get 10.625. For all our troubles. <laughs> For G, thank you. And you voted um, it through the 44D vote. Yes, that small portion. The commissioners understand that that's inequitable, and we've been lobbying for the last couple of years to reapportion that. We say, hey, you guys keep 70, give us 30. Uh, and that has met, met with some resistance. The state is very lucky to give up money that they may already have their hands on. The commissioners led the charge and got all of the other counties together, the six, five other counties, five other active counties, and said, hey, we need to rethink this. What about a modest increase in the deeds excise, which hasn't increased in decades, using that modest increase to supplement state revenue, county revenue, and they were going to dedicate some money to the Community <coughs> Preservation Act. Uh, we thought it was a brilliant proposal the other counties did. Uh, Representative Cutler uh, filed legislation along with Senator Keenan uh, to do that House Bill 2429, uh, and we were very excited about that prospect. Um, some things have changed. Unfortunately, the Community Preservation Act group felt that they should just increase recording fees and that they should get all of the money. And so in the House budget and in the Senate budget, there's language that does that and unfortunately doesn't address our concerns. We'll continue to make that effort go forward uh, and work very hard, but Plymouth County, rest assured, has always been at the forefront of these legislative efforts to try and correct some of these formulas. There's another problem with recording fees. We could talk about that later, but I think that's what you wanted me to touch on, Commissioner Hanley. Hey, amazingly, Tom, you made it very boring. But <laughs> 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 I was looking for a little more rash attacks, a little more <laughs> uh, bottom line is this, the reason for the infomercial folks is we need your help. We need your help with your, your delegations. We need your reps and your senators to sign on to this legislative effort. If we could double the revenue from deeds excise, 
you could do that much more for them. To come and there you go. Thank you. So You're welcome. Well, it's it's, it's yeah. exciting yeah. to me. No, 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 no. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, did you, you name a town name? <laughs> um, good evening. My name is Mary Power, and um, I'm from Hingham. Um, first of all, I want to thank um, the commissioners and the board, you know, for the budget. And I appreciate the fact that decisions aren't always unanimous. You know, I think we all kind of we all appreciate that. I guess as I'm looking at the decision that's before us, I just have have two things. You know, the first one is that this operating budget was the result of, you know, I got to believe hundreds of hours of meetings and building consensus and pushing back and forth. You know, all what we do in, in our budgets, and sometimes we have votes that are five to nothing or three to nothing, and, you know, sometimes sometimes they're not unanimous. As a, as a member of the advisory board, I'm sort of counting on the three folks and the other folks who spent the hundreds of hours on this budget and I'm a little uncomfortable reaching into one line item to make one decision without having the benefit of, of being in the room. And, and I say that with appreciation for, um, appreciation for the idea. But I guess as I also look at this scenario and sort of seeing it for the first time, it's, it's a little bit of a fire hose. It's, it's really helpful. Um, I guess what I would just... I would ask two things. First is that if there is this cliff that that we seem to be falling off, that whether it's part of next year's budget, I would look to the commissioners to say, kind of here's our plan in aggregate. Let's look at the different pieces and not maybe just this this one piece right here. Um, because you know, perhaps there's a different way to do it, perhaps there's a better way. But it, it kind of feels to me like we're reaching into one budget line without the benefit of all the information and all the analysis that these very smart, capable people go. So I think just as, you know, as a selectman, when our, our votes are two to one, uh, we ask for people to, you know, go with the majority and trust the fact that we've done the work. Um, I guess that's what I'm inclined to do tonight on this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to call the vote on the Roberts Rules. Go ahead. All right, so... Um, let's get the uh, so we have a motion we have a, a second on the motion second to uh, call the vote and um, let me ask this because a preliminary matter are there any potential yes votes to this amendment anybody signify by raising your hand if you are planning to vote in favor of Commissioner Plata's um, amendment I have since I made the motion I think I will okay that being said uh, I believe we have to go to a roll call vote for this. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what, um, anybody has a motion to, I'll have to say a motion to close debate on this matter. So move. All right. and, and now we'll proceed to a roll call vote. Abington? No. Bridgewater? No. Brockton? No. Carver? Duxbury? No. East Bridgewater? Halifax? No. Hanover? Yes. Hanson? No. Hingham? No. Hull? Kingston? No. Lakeville? No. Marion? No. Marshfield? No. Mattapoise? Middleborough? No. Norwell? Pembroke? No. Plymouth? No. Plimpton? Rochester? No. Rockland, Situate, Wareham, no. West Bridgewater, no. Whitman, no. Uh, the motion fails. Three point four three in the affirmative to seventy five point one four in the negative. Right. Thank you for your vote, everyone. Uh, for the newer members, I'd, I'd love to give you an operational tour of the registry at some point. Uh, just give me a call and we'll show you what we do. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes? I uh, just want to make a comment that when we come back here next year, I'm hoping that the commissioners will, and the board here will have a plan going forward for the next five years of how we're going to make this work and fix this. I'm also the board of directors of the Mass Municipal Association, and we are sponsoring 
and look at some other things. So I have a little more work to do as, as well on that. Thank you. Okay, but we need to have a real plan. Agreed. A one piece isn't going to do it. All right. And then we've been going in the overall operating budget for the 20 to 2020. Do I have a second? Second. All right. This time I'll we'll, um, read the, the motion. <clears throat> motion to provide for the maintenance of the County of Plymouth, its departments, boards, and commissions, institutions, and sundry other services for certain improvements <clears throat> and to meet certain requirements of Massachusetts general law regulating the disbursement of county funds and the approval thereof for fiscal year July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All right, we'll the motion passes unanimously. So now we're at the uh, final section, the announcement section. I know that there were some, some questions, uh, at least one uh, with regards to the, the county woodlot. Again, I know you gave us a summation sure. earlier. Um, that and any other closing remarks you want to make. Oh, thank you. We're, we're, we're lively to make. Let's take it over to the oh, podium, please. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> thank you, Warren. <laughs> never, Dan, never. Uh, I want to thank, thank you for the lively debate, and Mary, I'd like to talk to you afterwards about the, about the long term plan. Um, but, uh, you know, I. I I, I thought I touched on everything when I when I came up here. You thought there might be more woodlot questions, so if you have a woodlot question, I'll answer it. Otherwise, I think it's time to go home. <laughs> I can't make the motion. You guys got to make the motion. So we're good. All right, great. Um, so uh, questions. I know you had a question about can you, the county woodlot. Mr. Mahoney, did you, or did you already get oh, satisfied earlier? Oh, okay. Set, you know. All right. Any other move that we adjourn? No. Okay. Well, I'm good. I know they're meeting. What are you, you going to meet now? Next Wednesday. Uh, I believe uh, Selectman Patrick, uh, we are. Flattery was voted in tonight. I heard a motion to adjourn. And second. All in favor. All right. Thank you, everyone.